Imprisoned, bound by the justice system, witness to Jeffrey Dahmer's horrific behavior, Christopher Scarver was faced with a decision that would change his life forever. Would he stand by and watch, or would he take matters into his own hands and bring an end to the atrocities committed by the notorious cannibal? This is the story of Christopher Scarver, the man who took justice into his own hands. Welcome to Crime Sight. We all know the story of the monster that is Jeff Dahmer, but how much do we really know about the man who ended him? Christopher Scarver's life was a story of a man struggling to find his footing in a world that had dealt him a tough hand. From a young age, Scarver had to endure abuse and neglect from those who were supposed to care for him. Despite these challenges, he tried to make the best of things and found work as an apprentice carpenter with the Wisconsin Conservation Corps. However, his life took a dark turn when he was fired from his job due to his erratic behavior. It was around this time that Scarver began hearing voices. These voices were like a dark whisper in his ear, calling him the Chosen One. He felt as though the voices were a call to action, to do something significant and make his mark on the world. But the problem was, Scarver had no idea what he was supposed to do or where to turn. The anger and frustration that had been simmering inside him for so long finally boiled over. In 1990, Scarver walked into the Wisconsin Conservation Corps with a gun and demanded money from the site manager, Steve Lohman. When Lohman only provided him with $15, Scarver was naturally outraged and did what anyone crazy would do. He shot him three times in the head, killing him. He then fled the scene, but was eventually caught by police and sentenced to life in prison. Scarver's time in prison was far from peaceful. He was housed at Columbia Correctional Institution, where he shared a cell with the notorious serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer. His anger and frustration continued to escalate, and in 1994, he took matters into his own hands and assassinated the notorious monster. From then on, he'd always be known as the man who killed the cannibalistic serial killer. To get the full picture, first, let's do a little recap on how the two prison pals ended up in the same place at the same time. As you recall, Jeffrey Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, was a real-life monster who terrorized young men and boys in the late 20th century. Dahmer's killing spree started in the late 1970s and continued for over a decade. He lured young men and boys to his apartment, drugged them, and then murdered and dismembered them. In some cases, he even engaged in cannibalism, eating parts of his victims' bodies. Yikes, right? When police finally caught him in 1991, they found a scene straight out of a horror movie in his apartment. Dismembered bodies, refrigerators filled with human remains, and all sorts of tools used for the dismemberment. It was a shock to everyone who knew him as a seemingly normal guy. Dahmer was sentenced to multiple life terms in prison, but he wouldn't live to serve his full sentence. On an unfortunate day in 1994, Jeff and Christopher Scarver were put together in a room, and only one of them walked out alive, and the rest is history. So, what really went down? Let's find out. Join Crime Sight on a thrilling journey through the most gripping and intriguing criminal cases of our time. Subscribe now and receive exclusive access to in-depth investigations, fascinating expert insights, and immersive crime storytelling delivered straight to your screen. So on that fateful day, Dahmer, Scarver, and Jesse Anderson, another murderer, were all assigned to clean the prison gym together. As Scarver entered the locker room, he could feel the cold, hard iron bars in his hands, and he could feel his anger boil inside him. He had finally reached the moment he had been waiting for since he had first laid eyes on Jeffrey Dahmer, the man who had terrorized and murdered 17 innocent people in a reign of terror that lasted over a decade. Scarver was determined to make Dahmer pay for his crimes, and he wasn't going to let anyone stop him. The fact that he was all alone with Dahmer in that locker room was a mystery to Scarver, but he didn't waste any time. He confronted Dahmer with the news story that he had kept in his pocket, and he asked him if he was responsible for the horrific acts described in the article. Dahmer's face turned pale, and he started to look for an escape, but Scarver was too quick for him. With one swift move, Scarver brought the iron bar down on Dahmer's head, and he could feel the skull crack under the force of the blow. Dahmer went down, and Scarver was not done yet. He then went after Jesse Anderson, who was working in a nearby room, and he repeated the same act of violence on Anderson. The guard who had been monitoring them later returned to find both Dahmer and Anderson lying on the floor, badly injured and near death. They were taken to a hospital, but it was too late for Dahmer, who was pronounced dead an hour later. Anderson would die two days later, 
after being removed from life support. Apparently, Scarver beat Dahmer against the wall over and over again until the notorious serial killer was no more. Also, it's interesting to note, Scarver said Dahmer didn't even make a sound during the attack. It was a violent end to a brutal life, and one that people still talk about today. So why'd he do it? When Scarver returned to his cell, he simply informed the guard, God told me to do it. Jesse Anderson and Jeffrey Dahmer are dead. He was crazy, remember? Scarver was on antipsychotic medication in prison at the time, but even so, many saw his actions as motivated by racism. The fact that Dahmer's victims were mostly black or Hispanic, while Anderson claimed that two black men committed his crime, only added fuel to that fire. Scarver himself had claimed to be a victim of racism in the past, saying, nothing white people do to blacks is just. But Scarver's hatred for Dahmer went beyond just racial tension. He loathed the serial killer for the sick and twisted games he played with food in the prison cafeteria. Dahmer would make dismembered limbs out of prison food and use packets of ketchup as blood. It was a terrorizing sight for the other inmates, and Scarver was determined not to become one of his targets. As Scarver himself put it, he would put them in places where people would be. Dahmer had crossed the line with everyone in the prison, from inmates to staff, and Scarver knew that he needed to keep his distance from the madman. Even after being escorted by a guard at all times, Dahmer still managed to have heated interactions with other prisoners, but Scarver stood firm, never approaching the serial killer. He was a lone wolf in the prison yard, determined not to become the target of Dahmer's truly disgusting humor. Years later, Scarver still remembers the events of that day vividly and has more to say about the serial killer he so vehemently despised. It's clear that the wounds from that encounter run deep, and Scarver will never forget the terror that Jeffrey Dahmer brought into his life. Scarver's life behind bars took a tumultuous turn after he killed Dahmer and Anderson. He became the subject of media attention and public curiosity, with many people wanting to know more about the man who killed the notorious serial killer. In the wake of the killings, Scarver was placed in segregation for his own protection, but he felt that he was being punished and mistreated. He accused the officials at the Wisconsin Secure Program facility of cruel treatment and filed a civil rights suit. The trial was a media circus, with journalists and spectators filling the courtroom to get a glimpse of Scarver and hear his story. However, despite his allegations of mistreatment, the court did not find in Scarver's favor and his suit was dismissed. Despite this setback, Scarver didn't give up. He filed an appeal, hoping to have his case heard once again, but unfortunately, that too was unsuccessful. Although Scarver has been locked up for over two decades, his story continues to captivate people, and his name still evokes strong emotions and reactions from those who have heard it. Whether you view Scarver as a hero or a villain, one thing is certain, he will always be remembered as the man who took down one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. What do you think about what he did? Let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and click the video on the right for another horrific story. See you next time.